Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the How to Run Online Live Action Role Playing Games panel. Um, we're going to start out by introducing ourselves. Um, uh, I am Olivia Montoya, and I've been LARPing for seven years, um, well, so, since 2013, um, approximately seven years. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I never really got into the, the concept of online LARPing until the pandemic began, but then again, like that, that's the case with a lot of LARPers. Um, uh, so, uh, I've been, but I, but I, I dove head first into that, uh, as soon as the pandemic began and I've been working on new, uh, new technology to, uh, facilitate like running and playing, uh, different styles of LARPs online and writing games. And I'm super excited. <laughs> Um, I'm Jerry Martin. I have been uh, playing LARP since 1998, so a really, really long time. And I started writing them in 99, so very shortly after I started playing them. Um, I started actually playing around with digital LARP a little bit before the pandemic began, mostly because I had friends that were in different parts of the country in the United States, and I couldn't play with them as easily because we couldn't all travel to each other. Um, and of course, the pandemic sort of necessitated the uh, the desire to play with each other's and non each other non physical spaces. And uh, there are new uh, technologies that have been emerging that have made uh, playing in online spaces both easier and more dynamic. Things that you wouldn't have normally thought you could do with live action games. So I've been really excited about seeing this technology and potentially integrating it into my design. My name is Tara Clapper, and I've been LARPing since about 2007, and I've been running online LARPs since about 2017. I find them to be really accessible, which is a big reason I run them online. But also, I started running them online because I had lost my job, and everybody was like, run a LARP, we'll pay you. And I was like, that takes money um, to do. That takes you know insurance and all sorts of stuff that's very expensive. And I realized I could do it online and eliminate a lot of those costs. So I started doing that and have been at it, at it ever since. My background is in publishing and marketing. And I specialize more in like storytelling adventures. So while I am getting into the world of pick up and play um, LARPs that I can publish online and people can uh, just kind of pick up and play them, uh, I really enjoy running specialized adventures with bespoke characters where, you know, the what the GM is doing as a player is a lot of the appeal of the game. So kind of participating in it and steering it in a way that makes it enjoyable and, and hits the player's goals. So that's what I've been doing in uh, Digital LARP. Um, and we'll segue into why we run LARPs online. I already talked about the accessibility a little bit. Uh, I have some chronic illness issues that I'm kind of working out. And, you know, I used to be a buffer LARPer, so I used to do combat. And some of my health issues started preventing that. So, you know, I do like to attend the weekend long games that uh, require less mobility, you know, that are indoors and that tend to be a little more expensive. Uh, but of course, with the pandemic, that is also not an option. So it's been online only, and uh, you know I've, I've had a big focus on that accessibility component. I understand that digital LARPs are not necessarily fully accessible to everyone. You kind of run into that thing where when you try to make things accessible, more accessible for one group, sometimes you negate the accessibility for others. So that's difficult. And that can be based upon platform, that can be based upon the whole concept of Zoom fatigue and, you know, which uh, which disabilities that can impact and affect. Um, so that's been a challenge, but also, like, I find that overall, I try to call my LARPs largely accessible because they're overall generally more accessible than in-person games in terms of, um, financial obligation because they're they're usually free to much less expensive than uh, an in-person LARP. And also that 
physical component and even the costuming component even if you buy a new costume for a digital larp you're only you're only seeing me from here to here so you know you can wear your pajama bottoms no matter what uh what other costume you're wearing if you want so accessibility has been a big um factor for me but it's also you know it's good entertainment the technology is available um you can as joey mentioned you can play with far away friends if you already have a community that's used to larping together you can run digital larps in between your events to keep them engaged and to provide additional content and it's also a nice way if you monetize your games uh, a digital event is a nice way to get some extra income i personally always almost always monetize my games although i'm trying to put some um i do have some free stuff out there for everyone i always try to do that first to make it as accessible as possible but for games that are stuck during the pandemic or games that uh, maybe run every other month normally and want some filler content in between you can you know even just charge 10 bucks and, like help keep your game afloat by having that option as well so uh like i like I, i'm sort of annoyed with myself that i didn't uh get into the concept of uh online larping earlier because not only am i also chronically ill and like i don't i've never done boffer larping i've always done like uh parlor games like one shot secrets and powers games and uh what's now referred to as lit form in some circles uh but uh it, uh, I, and in addition to the uh, the chronic illness issue, I also live in the middle of nowhere and I don't drive. So like I have to travel like by bus or get a ride to get to LARPs that are over an hour away. Um, like like every time they're they're at least an hour and a half away, usually more, <laughs> or to like go. Uh, and sometimes it, like, multi-day events are expensive and like not everyone can afford to do that or you can only afford to do it like once a year. So uh, I, I'm now very, very passionate about the idea of online LARPing lowering the barrier to entry for LARP. Like, cause I'm sure there's a lot more people out there who would be interested in trying LARPing, but they just saw it as something that wasn't accessible to them before or, um, and I, I think that like, uh, that, that's why I'm so interested in creating new technologies uh, that make it easier to run games online than it is in person, including types of games you wouldn't have imagined uh, were playable using uh, what technologies used to be available before the pandemic. And uh, another cool thing about online LARPing is that you can play games with people all over the world at the same time. Like I have played a LARP where there were people in Europe, the United States, and Australia in the same game, and it was amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I want to make it as easy as possible for uh, recruiting new GMs and new players and uh, like, like bringing new blood into the LARP community so that we can see all sorts of cool new stuff. Um, I already mentioned that uh one of the big advantages is that if you have people that you have played with before that live in areas that are not close to you, you have the opportunity to play with them again without having to travel. And Olivia mentioned that as well. Um, but like both Tara and Olivia, I'm also chronically ill and I'm disabled and the accessibility is just a big point in its favor. I can't, I started out doing buffer LARPs and I can't really do those anymore. It's too hard on my body. But this gives me the ability to, when I'm having you know, a day or a week or a month where I'm just not up to the task of physically going to a game, I can either run or play a game that takes place online and still participate. The other advantage that I found is that you can do really experimental things with online games that you can't necessarily do in other types of games, where you can uh, do things that are a little more abstract, where you can, uh, send things across digital technologies that are not going to necessarily work, even in things that would be like parlor, or theater, or secrets and powers games. There are ways to use the types of technologies you're using that are not necessarily going to work in a live game. So uh, I, I guess the next thing that I am, we're going to talk about is like, so how do people LARP online? 
And I mean, I guess to start out, you sort of have to define like, okay, what is online LARP uh, slash uh, live action online games, which is another term that it has uh, become prominent in this space. Um, like everybody uses a different definition to like define like, okay, what is an online LARP and how is it different from a tabletop RPG or like other stuff? Like depending on what technologies you're using, like, is this like a video game at this point or like like what what is what exactly is going on uh my personal definition for uh what makes something a larp is that you are doing something as your character using your body in some way even if it's just like you are playing your character typing on a computer like if it's like a text-based uh like live action game and that you're generally doing something rather than describing what you're doing but there's gray areas even there and <laughs> so um like if we if uh, the rest of us want to go around and, like talk about like uh, uh like how how do we define online larp and then we can move on to like okay how exact what are the nuts and bolts <laughs> yeah i think we run into definitely a lot of different definitions um i know it's also worth mentioning that larping has been used kind of in a pejorative way um by some people that most of us are not associating with to like just make fun of what other people do um and so there's that definition that you know is kind of floating around out there that's been applied to online activities and then there's also people creating you know a twitter handle uh you know that are just larping as a character even if there's no like video involved and people using it to describe just text based role play and then, um, I mean, my definition was always more the video, you know, you're in character and not narrating most of the time. Because I even had somebody get a little huffy with me, like, well, it's just like me dressing up and playing Dungeons and Dragons online. And I'm like, no, it's not because I'm not narrating what my character's doing. It's face-to-face -face interaction. So um, the face-to-face -face interaction for me is a big component of it. But I don't want to be, I don't like being a gatekeeper. And I also understand that people who have been doing online text-based role play and muds and mushes are, you know, kind of protective of their own domains and saying, I've been writing this for, you know, for, for 20, 30 years. And I, I was in that world too, back in the AOL RP days. So I, I certainly get that, um, you know, and then, you know, like, like Joey mentioned, kind of experimenting with the form also kind of, makes it become a little bit more expansive. So I run a game called Intrigue and Independence, which is free. I run it on Discord. 95% of the game is a text-based role-playing game on Discord. It takes place in real time, and it's about the American Revolution. But every few weeks, we do this. We get on Discord, and we're all in character, and we're, we're LARPing. We're talking to each other as our characters. So I've deliberately blended that form and I'm far from the first person to do it. So there's some like deliberate blending, I guess, of genres going on there. And that's okay too. I mean, you know, people have probably long gotten dressed up as their favorite character and, um, you know, had conversations and stuff like that online. You know, we're far from the first to do that. So I don't want to gatekeep the terminology, but when I use the term digital LARP, I mean face-to-face and the majority of it is non-narrative. So you're speaking as your character, doing things as your character. And it is live action, meaning um, there's some kind of presence of you as the character. Uh, I tend to mean on video, but I understand that's not always accessible to everyone. And I think even just voice, for example, would be um, would also be live action uh, and could be a really fun design too. I generally mean when I'm describing um, live action for LARP, it happens in real time and that it is non-narrative and that you are playing your character instead of yourself. And that can mean through a variety of means. It can be voice, it can be video, there are text-based LARPs now where you text someone over the phone, not just typing. So you can be, um, you can have someone's telephone number and text them while they're texting you. There are actually quite a few of those now because it's kind of an emerging 
um, trend in them, which I like. I like that concept of you're in a situation and the character that you're playing is texting another character in another city asking them for help. That's a really cool idea. Um, so again, I, I much like Tara, I don't want to gatekeep this form. I think it's interesting because there's different ways that you can play a character where it's not just you're describing what you're doing, like you're playing something like a tabletop role playing game and sitting around a table and going, my character does this. Well, you're not, you're not describing my character does X, you're playing a character. So you're saying, I do this, or I don't feel this way or whatever. Um, normally when I was starting to get into the, the live action digital medium, it was very much video focused and it's much less video focused now. A lot of the ones that I've been running lately have been mostly audio because a lot of people are a little gun shy about getting on and being on video. They're much more comfortable with being heard, being on like voice and audio calls. So there's a, kind of a pull to go in that direction now, but they're still playing their characters, not saying my character does this, my character does that. They're interacting, they're role playing as their characters. Another thing that I've heard about uh, but I haven't participated in myself, is that there's some people who are um, also even challenging the live action part of like, of and still calling it a LARP. Like that there are people, uh, uh, like uh, at least there, there's people from a, uh, established LARP communities who are now like going on TikTok and doing things as asynchronously. <laughs> like I, I don't do TikTok, but I've heard about this going on where like people like have characters, they they dress up and like they upload videos and then people respond to them and create shared worlds. Uh, they're like, I, I feel like there's uh, room to explore lots of cool new stuff, new things and like the, having our boundaries like challenged a, a bit, uh, like boundaries of like definitions challenged is healthy so uh, i guess the next thing to talk about is like nuts and bolts stuff um so uh like what like what kind of games are we able to run right now what do we use to uh to run those games so like especially earlier on um in the pandemic uh a lot of what was being run uh was either uh, American freeform style games that are uh, relatively easy to run on things like Zoom, where um, people uh, 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 co-create characters and uh, setting, and uh, then explore, uh, then have relatively low mechanics um, that don't require any special technology. So you're, it's more about exploring emotions and uh, telling a story together. The uh, then uh, things like say secrets and powers games with lots of mechanics and items and everything like that. That that might be changing though. <laughs> we'll talk about that too. Um, but uh, so uh, I do know there's also people who have run some uh, some game some parlor style LARPs that are like more heavy on the role play than the mechanics with pre written characters. Uh, but I've seen a lot of American freeform stuff and. I've seen people run games in Zoom, over Discord, Google Meet, Google Hangouts, uh, Jitsi, and uh, the one I'm really excited about now is uh, Gather or at Gather.town. I will talk a lot more about that later because I'm I've got a project related to Gather. <laughs> nice. I've been uh, primarily running. I started in Google Hangouts, and uh, then when I had monetized my games for a couple of years when it upgraded to a paid Zoom account to um, be able to kind of have more control and accessibility for people. Um, it just seems to run a little bit smoother. So uh, now I run in Zoom. There are certainly a ton of options out there. I personally like to keep it simple. So it's kind of funny because I'm known for digital LARPing, but I am far from the most tech savvy person in the world i am probably the least tech savvy person in this in this discussion um and so i like to keep it simple and i find that also makes it a little more accessible for my participants and the more that i go on i find that having the tools available um as we go is really important so i use zoom and then you know aside from the character sheet which they get beforehand it tends to be like, just show up as you are. We're gonna talk about everything. We'll go through our safety rules. 
and then we'll have a 15 minute break to costume change. You know, people like having that um, advantage of you can just kind of show up and play. And that's kind of like the next stage. It's sort of it's difficult to convey, right? Because you think especially for anything that you pay for, you have to you know, do a lot of preparation and have a lot of different tools. And um, I found that primarily just keeping it simple, using it disc using Discord works best for me and my audience. Uh, I've used Discord as well. Um, I did run a weekend long game called Chariot LARP. I've done a bunch of shorter Chariot games, which is my sci-fi game, but I ran a weekend long one on Discord. So I find Discord right now is going to be better for games where you need to have separate rooms that people keep jumping in and out of. And also, I think Discord is one of the only ways where you can see who's in what room, um, which for certain games can make a big difference, um, especially depending on players. And yeah, I've looked into Gather and uh, I've primarily been sticking to Zoom and Discord, but I've even gotten into a little bit of LARPing on Facebook with our new rooms feature, which is really interesting. And um, I used to stream a lot uh, here on Twitch. And, you know, that's a whole nother set of, of things. Um, it's really cool because you can get that audience interaction. So if you're running something where in the game world uh, you are streaming or interacting on like a news broadcast, it's really cool because you can entertain audience questions and stuff like that and have the audience be part of the LARP. Um, I can't believe I used to do this on my like 10 year old laptop, but I used to run uh, Google Hangouts and stream it to Twitch and monitor everything at once. And I, I determined that was a little much for one GM to do. I like focusing on the storytelling more, but it's cool. And it's something that, you know, people have have done and have been doing. Um, and I look forward to doing more of it. But it's, um, you know, sometimes it's cart before horse with some of these tools um with things like photo releases and waivers i've gotten a little more wary especially during the pandemic of just putting my players out there on the internet for everybody to see or make fun of or whatever so uh that's also something to keep in mind that i think is made me a little more conservative than i used to be i used to be like sure it's experimental let's just throw this out there and and now especially that I get signups from people I've never met. Um, you know, I want to make sure that I'm being especially careful and like learning their boundaries because it's not, you know, a friend that I've played with 20 times. It's like a little bit different. And so, you know, that's been a big challenge. Um, but that technology is out there to be really experimental and just kind of stream and broadcast and get your videos out there too if you do a video component. So, oh. Um, I tend to prefer Discord for many of the reasons that Tara's mentioned, but I'm also looking into potentially running something on TikTok, which is what uh, Olivia mentioned. And that's largely because a lot of the people that use TikTok are very proactive. They like coming up with storylines. They like um, creating characters and creating a cohesive story on their own. So if you give someone a story seed and they're already part of the TikTok community, they're going to run with it and they're going to create something you could never even imagine, something so creative. So I think it's a new technology that people should absolutely embrace as part of games because there's so many creative people that are already interested in playing characters and storylines there that are creating their own world. It's definitely a technology. Like I'm a little old for TikTok personally. I probably won't be making any videos of my own, but the people that are already there that are making their own videos, it's it's amazing what they come up with. And it's definitely an emerging technology for, for LARPing. And it's something that I think a lot of other people should start looking into. Um, also, Olivia mentioned, uh, mentioned Move and that's not Move, what is it? Again, I lost my train of thought there. Um, gather? Gather, yes, Gather. Um, Olivia mentioned Gather, which is something that she and I have talked about before, which is, I think, going to be kind of a game changer in how we do digital LARPing, because that is, it, it's an amazing technology where you can basically just have a town where you can 
have characters that when they get within a certain distance of each other, they can then interact. And she'll explain more about it like in detail later, but it's, it's definitely going to change the way digital LARPing works, I think. So and another thing I, th I think is worth talking about, is especially so early on in the pandemic, especially people were scrambling, like there weren't a whole lot of games that were written specifically for online play. So people were thinking, OK, what games can we convert to online play? What games are possible to play on, on online that are already written? But uh, there's also been a lot of people writing new games specifically for this brave new space. Um, and like, like I, I jumped into that early. Like I, I think uh, uh, like it was within days of uh, getting sent home from my job that I started um, the social distancing LARP jam on itch. So like I was like encouraging people to write more games that were playable online and it got a lot of attention. And um, I also ran a session of John Cole's LARP jam uh, to get um, even more people writing specifically. And they ended up submitting it to the social distancing LARP jam. But like, so LARP jam, John Cole's LARP jam is a specific um, like framework for running an event where people write a LARP in like about three hours. Um, and two games came out of it. Um, one of which I've run a bunch uh, uh, of times. It, this is called We Robot, and it involves. Uh, it's played on uh, like a video platform, like uh, in a single room, uh, where uh, each each player is uh, a facet of a, a newly forming AI, and they use uh, objects in their vicin in the vicinity of where they are uh, to uh, sort of to incorporate that into their storyline and like whether or not the AI uh, comes to singularity. And they're re also receiving information uh, by private messages on Zoom or on Discord uh, that influence the, uh, the ongoing play. So that's something that would be very difficult to do in person, like send people private information from, like, from the GM that influences play uh without other uh without other players knowing what you're doing <laughs> um and uh the other game that came out of that uh was uh it's called uh uneasy lies the head and it is a tiktok game i have not played it because i don't do tiktok but i think that the uh tiktok larpers uh should look into that because like it's uh it's up there on itch for free same with we robot um so uh and now, like I like, there's there's so many people writing new new LARPs playable online, and like definitely check out the Golden Cobras because like there's an explosion of new games. Yeah, the pandemic was really a really interesting um, and difficult development um, for it. I actually had COVID when at the beginning, so I. I uh, was sick end of February, beginning of March, and everybody was coming to me like, you're the person that, you know, has all these digital LARPs run things. And a lot of my LARPs are, they're not pick up and play. A lot of them are like, you sign up and I run them for you. And I have, or I have like one or two GMs that I've trained to to run it. Um, but they don't do like the end to end sign up character creation, everything. Like I usually do part of that and then they run it. So I didn't have anything for a while. And then I relaunched Intrigue and Independence since that was free. But it really made me realize the importance of having, um, especially concerning accessibility, having pick up and play games or having things that are freely accessible um, on Golden Cobra, um, on Itch, you know, all those different things. So one thing I did was I have uh, one game I wrote called lore which is the live online raptor experience and it's very cheesy and very campy um unlike most of my games and i was like oh this one would work really well as like a pick up and play so joey is actually turning this into a um a, a pick up and play kind of document so that i can actually just like sell that through drive through rpg or whatever but having those like free or low cost pick up and play games is really really um really a more like accessible way to do it, I think. And Golden Cobra again has like a ton of them. That last year they had they introduced that digital category, and then this year they all had to be playable uh, in our current pandemic situation. So it's just a great resource there. 
Yeah, a, a lot of the games that I write are uh, pick up and play games. I don't think I have, so I've written um, a couple of digital games that I haven't turned into pick up and play because this year has been, well, this year has been this year, basically. So it's been hard to produce things, like actually get them from a beginning thing to a finished product. So I've run the games, but I haven't actually turned them into books. So that's one of my goals for the for November is to get them actually up in the stores. But um, my a lot of the games that I have actually written that are actually available for sale, some of them can be adapted to be played online. Like, for example, I did um, with LARP Shack, I took Elsewhere, which is a game that's a pick-up play game I wrote, that we just played it online instead of playing it in a physical location because it's meant to be played in just someone's house. It's, it's about a family that has a, a child that had gone missing and then returned suddenly and says that they've been, they had been away with the fairies. And it's about how the family dynamic works with having this child who has come back now as an adult and tries to reintegrate themselves into their life. And there's no reason that this game can't be played online. So I, I would suggest like, if you want to run like a digital LARP and you don't want to write it yourself, look for games that either are written specifically for the medium or look for games that people have written that you can either get for free or get for low cost and see, well, maybe I can just do this as like a Zoom call or a Discord chat or something like that and get a bunch of your friends together and play it. So another thing I wanted to do is like quickly rattle off like some of the things I think of are like great advantages uh, to online LARP. Um, uh, for one, like private messaging info, like uh, I already explained with We Robot. Um, less printing. You don't have to like print all sorts of like character sheets and like, uh, especially for like for games that have a like long character sheets. Um, you don't have to print that. Um, then and there's uh, there's also new uh, new tech I'm excited about that is is great for speed dating style LARPs. Um, that some of which I haven't seen people explore yet. Like there is. Uh, I, I attended an online event on uh, a platform called Icebreaker that I think would be perfect for playing speed dating style games because it has a system that matches people randomly to and or like or even let non randomly um, like so that you can organize like, OK, here here it's it's automated. So it'll send people into the like you just set up the schedule for it and it'll uh, uh, people can opt into like uh specific mixers where they get paired with one person after another. Uh, I think it's really cool. People should uh, look into that. Um, and uh, also using backgrounds is great in Zoom. Like you can uh, like download a bunch of images and change your background to represent what's going on in the game. Like that was like an, an important part of like when I was play testing lore, that was the fun, fun part about it was like constantly changing the backgrounds. Like here's the forest on fire as I'm like, running away from dinosaurs and uh, it, it was it was so much fun um and also you can add all sorts of other multimedia stuff in that you that would either be uh prohibitively expensive in person or not possible like uh i've seen some larps add in like pre-recorded audio or um using images uh and uh Discord has a lot of cool things you can do even without adding bots. Like you can move players into different rooms as an admin. Um, so like you could use that to represent something going on in the world of the game. Like I've seen that for uh, uh, the uh, an online version of the game called, I, I believe it's As We Know It. Um, it it's, a, it's a game about an alien invasion um, and where you are like huddled up in your space with your only your phone and you randomly get connected to people uh, that are in other parts of the country also huddled up with their phones. And it was an amazing experience. That was one of the, the earlier, um, like, online LARPs that I played uh, during the pandemic. Yeah, I think another thing, you mentioned the one-on-one um, the -on -one messaging and the different capabilities. In some ways, LARPing online has actually allowed for a safer experience because obviously with a pandemic right it's safer because you're in your own space you're social distancing by doing doing larping online but uh on zoom i encourage my players to do 
one-on-one -on -one messaging for consent negotiations and they can also privately message me and you can do this on discord too you can they can also privately message the gm at any time and have that private conversation there's also a little more control in that you can always just turn off your video you can turn off your camera you know you're in your own space you're already in your own the safety of your own home so i really appreciate that and having adapted you know some of the safety mechanics for use online too um, but i think a big part of it is people are in a space where they already feel comfortable and it just kind of allows them to explore in a different way and also allows them to retreat if they need to um, in a different way. And most of these LARPs, you know, you're good with like seven-ish people uh, in a room. After that, it gets a little, it gets a little more um, intense to manage. Um, but of course, you know, like running a game on Discord with multiple rooms and stuff like that is also a thing that's doable, a thing that I've done. Um, but yeah, safety has been uh, a really nice, I think, part of it just because of how much more you can do. I mean, you have to be careful about, so you still have to be careful about who you're playing with and how people are interacting and if or where you're broadcasting. But it just having that control over your own environment just makes things, I think, so much easier for people to emotionally go a little bit deeper, a little faster, if the game has the right pace. So uh, another thing I wanted to touch on is, okay, so you want to run an online LARP. So where do you get a game if you don't want to write one yourself? Number one, I'm going to plug the Golden Cobras again. Uh, uh, also, there is um, a, a website called LARP Library where there some of the games are playable online, some of them aren't. But like I've uh, one of them, one that I've run that works very well online is called A Second Chance for Wings, and all the materials are freely downloadable. And I also or, uh, about like sometime during the summer, I compiled a list of over 84 games and where to find them. Uh, that are uh, uh, either definitely playable online or potentially playable online, and um, uh, that it, I, I guess the the easiest way to find that is to uh, search in the the Facebook group uh, called uh, uh, I believe it's Remote Digital LARP and Live Action Online Games on Facebook, where I I posted a link to it in there. I'll also post a link to this document. Um, in uh, the double exposure uh, slash Metatopia Discord server. Uh, it, it is a, 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 in Google Sheets, so like anyone can look at it. Um, there also uh, check out stuff on itch.io, like uh, stuff from the social distancing LARP jam or other, uh, other things that people have posted. There's also several other Facebook groups that will post games where the, like, people will post their games that they've written for any, uh, anyone else to use. There's also some on drive through RPG. Yeah, when you're else um, want to plug something? yeah, when you're uh, also when you are looking on itch, even if it's not under let's say one of the jams, look, make sure you're searching for physical games as well. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to find because you'll just pull up all of the um, itch was originally supposed to be for video games, and then the the indie uh, analog game crowd found it. So there's a bunch of analog games that are both LARPs and uh, TTRPGs up there. So if you want to find the, the analog games, make sure you're searching for physical games on itch. That way you can actually find what you're looking for. But um, yes, and there's also oh, go ahead. There is also a LARP tag that you can yes. click on, like you can search specifically if it is tagged by LARP in the physical games category. Exactly. Um, and yeah, there are some on uh, Drive Through RPG, uh, but uh, they're kind of they do have them. They're actually less on Drive Through RPG than they than there are on Itch, but there are some crossovers. Like some people post on both. I'm one that has uh, for Drunning Moon Studios. I have mine on both. Um, and then you can also search on Twitter because there are a lot of uh, analog game designers on Twitter that also will not necessarily post their games, but will post links to things that they're working on. So you can actually go on that and uh, you can search. Now, sometimes you will come up with other things when you search on Twitter, but 
there is a fairly large community presence from the analog game design community on Twitter. And so we've got. Oh, oh no, that's go ahead. I was just going to move on to the I organized gonna, players. Oh yeah, I was. I was going to. I was going to say we got twenty minutes left. We still have a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah, for um, organizing players for LARPs. I found that that can be uh, just as difficult online as it can be in person. So first of all, when you're running, a, when you're running a game that isn't that's just for fun, that isn't something you're selling tickets for, people are always more likely to just not show up last minute. Um, and like I understand because having health issues, it's difficult sometimes for me to keep all those commitments. But it's just kind of a fact of the medium, like. You know, it's one of those things people decide last minute whether or not they can go. So it's kind of like all these skills that I learned back in the day, managing my AOL RP and managing like a World of Warcraft guild, stuff like that is still really useful in keeping a community together around digital art, keeping people engaged and interested and excited. And of course, this is all like marketing background too but like just keeping people active and interested and kind of ready to go um i've been using tools like i have an email list now so that i can notify people ahead of time i post in my group to like get the hype going or to measure how people how interested people are in one topic versus another and then i use um let's see i use doodle to schedule sometimes discord i use discord to like again gauge interest and then i try to do a check-in like the day before the event the day of the event um and work that way the other tools i want to mention is like, i have two monitors which is how i'm looking at our outline over here which if you're running uh anything online is definitely recommended because you can pay attention to your game to your players on the screen and then you can have your materials on the other side or your character sheet or whatever it is you're looking at. But I wanted to mention about how community management and organizing your players is a really big part of keeping engagement instead of just kind of throwing something out there. And the other thing is it doesn't always have to be your community, right? Like I have my own community, but I, uh, Olivia mentioned um, the playtest of lore. I don't necessarily playtest in my community. There are communities out there that are always asking for people to run play tests. And I'm like, great, this is perfect. I have I have things I want to test. And there are people that are so that's like their thing. They're so into play testing. So you don't necessarily have to build your whole own community, especially if you're not monetizing. We have other communities out there for that purpose. There, you know, there are people that want to play test, there are people that want to hop in and play. Um, I don't organize things like metatopia and large conventions right i just show up at them because other people are those strong community organizers and and i just show up and participate so don't feel like you have to build everything ground up you can make a solid game and take it through play testing to publish if you want all using resources that other people are gladly going to hand you I'm going to plug a Facebook group that I started called LARP Guinea Pigs that is specifically for finding playtesters for your LARP. Um, it, yeah, it's a, it's a Facebook group. There's over 100 people in it. Um, I, I'd like to see more activity in there, but there's also other like LARP-related Facebook groups where you can find people to uh, either join your games or to playtest your games. And uh, another, another thing I've seen the uh, LARP groups use to like organize their players is Facebook events. Then you can see like who is RSVP'd and you can share more information like, um, like uh, using Google Docs to, for signups and summaries or uh, share a Google Drive of character and world information, for example. And uh, the Google Forms is great for games with casting or to use for feedback. So like lots of, lots of great tools on Google there. Yeah, I know we're short on time, and um, Joey, I know you had something to add about this topic, but after that, I, I'm curious about any other safety tools. I already covered a bunch of stuff, but other safety tools also that um, both of you are interested in using, because since safety is the most important thing, I didn't want that part to get left out. Yeah, the only oh, yeah, thing I, I was going to add is that um, 
I don't like Teresa. I don't do a lot of my only uh, my own community um, organizing for this sort of thing because with digital LARPing, I usually let other groups do it. And one group I wanted to mention was LARP Shack because I've been using them primarily uh, since the since the pandemic began, and they're a really great group to play with and to test your games with. Um, and you can find them on Facebook, just at Google LARP Shack, and it will pop up. And they've been trying to get more players and more people to to play test with them. So look them up if you want to try to uh, play some really interesting digital LARPs. And uh, I, I have a few things I can say about safety um, that like from playing in a lot of uh, existing groups that have started to run games online, especially like in the uh, American Freeform and Nordic scenes, like they are big on the safety tools and they, they have uh, come up with a lot of uh, uh, ways of using these online, including cut and break. So like, uh, like, like break is in like, like uh, slow down here, uh, cut is in like, we we've got to stop and discuss like some, uh, like there, there's a problem here. We need to stop the game entirely and discuss it. Uh, there's the door is always open. You can, um, uh, leave whenever you need to, like, just like reassuring people that it's okay. You are more important than the game or like putting, putting your, uh, your hand like this over your eyes and like w looking down and then leaving the space, like letting people know like, okay, I'm leaving the space. And then like to do the opposite when you come back. Um, uh, there's also a tool uh, known as Largo uh, where uh, you say like if someone says something a little too intensely and you're not you're not really OK with it um, within a game, you say that person's name Largo and then they know they stop immediately and redo what they just did, but at a lower intensity and also like. Uh, online uh, versions of the X card are uh, sometimes like either in chat or like go like this on video. Like there's something I, I do not want in this game and we need to like excise that. And lines and veils are also of use for LARPs. Uh, so like, what are your hard lines? What are your uh, like things you want to be glossed over essentially? And it's nice that you can have live documents that you can edit as you go. So I usually have been having a document open and if people come across something that they want to add, they can either private message me or put it on there and then I just communicate it via chat and so I make sure everyone sees it but instead of like making a big deal about something we don't need to pause the whole game for it's really nice because I can just run it right into the flow of things and just drop it into the chat make sure everybody sees it and we move on obviously if there's something that you know we need to use cut for we do that but it's great because you can use multiple tools to communicate that way I usually do lines and veils. Um, the way I do it is I tell people before the game even starts and I have them private message me what their lines and veils are. And then I put it in the chat as well and then announce it at the beginning of the game. That way they have two versions, like not two versions, two ways of getting the information. And it's a completely anonymous so they don't know who sent it to me. Um, I can put my own in there as well. That way they don't know if it's mine. The other thing is I also use cut and I like having the the physical gesture as well so people can see it. Or I just list it as the X card and I just have people say X. It depends on who I'm working with. Like some some online conventions prefer you use X card as opposed to cut. Um, sometimes I also use something that I, I call caution, which is something that came from buffer LARPing, which is, hey, this is a subject that I'm a little sensitive with, but I don't necessarily want to completely stop the action and that's you put up your hands you go caution and then you say whatever the thing is that is making you a little worry so like say caution screaming or caution um cheating like someone in the game has cheated on somebody and that lets the other player know that the subject is a little uncomfortable for me but don't stop completely just maybe be a little bit cautious tone it down a bit uh I guess I just wanted to like, uh, before we get to the very end, I, I did want to mention like uh, a little bit about creating LARP communities online and ways that you can uh, like have a, a healthy online community. Um, you can uh, have persistent uh, Facebook groups or Discord servers, uh, have social events that are like out of character stuff, uh, uh, debriefs after games where people can talk about like what 
uh, like especially in a play testing setting like what worked for them and what didn't um like I, i've uh, participated in a few groups uh events specifically for uh, about larp writing or like uh programs for bringing in new gms uh even like larp writing boot camps like i feel like a lot of this stuff doesn't get touched on but it's especially going to be important now that we're online to both bring people in and keep people in <clears throat> definitely um, do we want to head over to any questions now we could also uh, mention where you can find our work and where you can find us online so we might want to do that before we pick up questions so um, I'm Jerry Martin. I own Drowning Moon Studios. So you can find all of my work on drowningmoonstudios.com. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Honey and Hedgerow. And I also have stuff on, as I mentioned, on Itch and on Drive Through RPG, also both, both under Drowning Moon Studios. So um, I, you can find my stuff uh, online on uh, my my stuff on itch is at uh, metaparadox.itch.io. I am at Paradox Revealed on Twitter, and you can find like a web, like a site that has like in information about all my personal projects at bitly portfolio. Uh, like a lot of my work is about the future of online LARP. Like, I because we're in the middle of a revolution here. Um, like, I am in the process of creating disc a Discord bot and um, a web app to work with Gather um, uh, to make it possible to run games that require you to keep track of items or secret information or abilities, and to like so that like there's a way that you can build a LARP in a database using these tools and then set your players loose in it and interact with that world through these other platforms that we already have. So like, um, keep your eyes open for that. I, uh, the, my, the portfolio link has inf more information about these things that I'm doing. Um, I, I, I think that we're going to see a lot more cool things in uh, upcoming months. Like I, like I've played a few games that like have sort of ARG elements mixed into the LARP. Like, um, like keep an eye on uh, Chaos League out of uh, Italy. I played a few of their games uh, uh, called Animus. Uh, there was two games in the series, um, and they included a lot of like uh, multimedia elements, like websites they created on the internet, like that you could that, that are part of the plot. Or like the the most recent one was where uh, people are like uh, sharing their screen as they are playing an interactive fiction game that is was built specifically to interact with the plot. Um, like there's cool stuff coming. My name is Tara M. Clapper, and you can find me at geekinitiative.com. I have a stable of about a dozen games uh, now that I've written specifically for online play, and most of them are bespoke games. So for about 50 bucks a ticket, you get about 12 hours of gameplay and a custom character. And what I'm really looking for is for people to get a bunch of friends together. So grab four or five of your friends look through my list of games and decide we want to play this game and I will completely customize it for you or even design something totally new for you, completely custom at about that same price. So I'm all about that personalization and um, bringing kind of that level of depth to the online gaming experience. So you can find me at geekinitiative.com or look up the Geek Initiative LARPs on Facebook and you will be sure to find me. So oh, uh, I guess we have time for a few questions. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Kristen 902 asked, uh, where would you recommend for someone who is new to online LARPs to dip their toe into online LARPs? And I know you have provided a ton of resources during this chat, but uh, with six minutes to go, uh, what would be the one place that you would that you would highlight for a new online LARPer? Online conventions. There are lots that new newcomers can sign up for, but the one I want to plug especially is ExtraCon, which is the online version of Intercon. The The schedule, the pre, uh, preliminary schedule is already up. You can check out what kinds of games are there. People from all sorts of communities all over the world are running these games. And that's a great way to like find out about like what groups are out there and meet the people who are the movers and shakers right now. I'd like to go ahead and uh, again plug the remote 
digital and live action online gaming group on Facebook. Um, that's kind of an internationally headed group because Garrett, who coined the term LAUG or live action online game, is my co-admin there. And we really try and get a healthy sampling from around the world. So if you just hang out there, you'll eventually find something uh, that hopefully um, reaches out to you. And, uh, you know, I, I would also advise don't just jump into an online game just because it's there. There are enough out there now that you can find something that's, that interests you, whether it's a certain genre or if you're not comfortable right on video. We talked about doing the audio only. Definitely find something you're comfortable with and then dive in that way. I'm in a second extra con. Absolutely, that is a good place to go for that. Another question? Um, Cryan Orion says, I want simple tools for decks of cards in online LARPs. Do you know of any? Actually, um, I have... I... No, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so I actually just wrote a LARP that requires you to use an online deck of cards. There there are a variety of options. I can't remember everyone off the top of my head, but there's deckofcards.io, I think is the most well-known one. I've actually got a bot in my Discord that is called uh, Dice Cord, and it actually lets you do card draws. It's got formulas for it. Now, it does depend on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to just draw like one, two, three, however many cards, it can do quite a few different draws. But if you want to do something like draw complex combinations, you might need something a little more sophisticated. That said, there are people who can actually program bots to do what you want them to do. So you might want to try to look into somebody who could program something for you. But if you just want simple deck, deck draws, Look for a bot. Dice Cord's a good one. I was wrong about the address of it. I checked that. It is not deckofcards.io. It is deck.of.cards. Uh, is I have run into a, a, like a few bugs with it though, but there there are others out there. You uh, you can search like online deck of cards, and there there's a, a variety of options. And uh, the deck of cards, deck dot of dot cards is specifically multiplayer. You can label like who, whose cards are whose and all work from a shared deck. Any other questions? I'm looking in the chat and it looks like we don't actually have more questions. We've had a lot of good resources shared though in that chat window. So um, if anybody is feeling a little lost, just uh, check out the chat transcript because it's, a, it. I mean, this. I, I'm just gonna bookmark the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I guess I just also wanted to say if like, if anyone else is like interested in uh, like, like if, if you want custom bots like to run your LARP or to do some aspect of your LARP, I make bots like that. <laughs> yeah, that, so that's why reach out to me. I was trying to plug. I was trying to say, hey, people, people design bots. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I, like I've already uh, made a bot for a game that someone else was, someone else wrote. Um, like, uh, like I'm still fairly new actually to bot to creating bots, but like I was like, I've got to learn how to do this because like this thing doesn't exist. So I've got to make sure that thing exists. So I've got to learn how to make bots. So now I've been doing it since the beginning of the pandemic, and so many people have reached out to me about using bots and LARP. People are totally interested in this. Great. Uh, we we have like one minute to spare here, and we do have a, one more question. How do you create a feeling of immersion and intimacy online? And this is this might be one that you're going to carry over to the uh, text channel and on uh, Metatopia's Discord server because I know it's a big topic. I'll give some real quick shortcuts. Um, number one, we already mentioned Zoom backgrounds. So if you're on Zoom, you can use a background. If you're not, you can hang a background. Number two, um, costuming and jewelry and the same kind of thing you would do with an in-person LARP. Number three, um, the video itself can be part of the game in certain settings. So if you're doing like sci-fi or post-apoc, make, make the computer part of the game. It's so much easier to just pretend like you're actually talking to people on a computer. It makes it much more immersive. 
And lastly, you can pretend to pass objects across the the internet. So like I'm handing you a piece of paper and then the person on the other end can be like that. Um, that's surprisingly effective. Exactly. That's surprisingly effective. Look, I've handed that piece of paper across so many miles. <laughs> Uh, also, I think like uh, a lot of it depends on uh, the the person who wrote the game, like uh, whether like uh, especially like it's it's a game design thing, especially to me, where like some people can write a game that like even like uh, like uh, despite all of the things that are keeping us apart, can make us feel connected. Like there was an entire category in the the Golden Cobra specifically for games that connect you across the distance. All right, well, uh, I think we are up with time. So thank you all for being here today. And um, and thank you, audience, for, for being such a, a great audience with lots of resources and some great questions.